What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build a hinged hoop house for a steel raised bed or any raised bed. Let's go. One of the goals for this bed is that we don't change, damage, or alter this steel raised bed in any way. I don't wanna be drilling holes and screwing through it. So in order to achieve this goal, what I'm going to do is build just a simple brace system in the back with some two by fours this way. I could attach my top structure, which I'll build, onto the back brace, and then just be able to open the hinge tube house just like that. So the first thing we're going to do is take a two by four, cut it into three pieces, and then make our little brace system in the back. To make this bracing system, I'm just gonna take a eight foot two by four right here. Like I mentioned, cut into three pieces. I'm gonna cut two pieces at 33 inches, and then that'll leave me one piece at 30 inches because this is a 96 inch piece. So first we'll take this, measure 33 inches and just mark that. I'm just gonna bump my square up and mark this. And I'm gonna cut this freehand because this is only gonna be a stake so it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. Now I'm gonna cut this piece at 30 inches and that will leave me with about 33 inches left. And I'll show you exactly why I'm cutting this to the length that I am. I need this one piece at 30 inches and I'll show you just why after. Now, I'm gonna take the two pieces that I cut at 33 inches and just cut them to points so that I can knock them into the ground as stakes. Now this will be easy to knock into the ground. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other piece that's 33 inches. I got all those pieces cut and I have these two stakes. Now I'm gonna knock them in right where these screws are. And the reason I cut this other piece at 30 inches because that's gonna be the distance. This is just gonna sit right in the center like that and strengthen the whole backside of this brace. So we'll start on this side. I'm just gonna take my stake and knock it into the ground right here. I'm gonna move, make sure I'm not hitting, hitting any wood chips or anything. Dig in just a little bit. I'm gonna take the stake and knock it in. I'm gonna try to make it as close to the bed as I can and as straight as I can. I don't want it twisting like this either because that'll uh, negatively affect my brace a little bit. Now that we're getting close to the top, what we wanna make sure is that it's just below this edge here. It doesn't have to be perfect, you'll see in a little while, but we're gonna wanna make sure it's just close to this edge, but we really don't wanna make sure we're hitting that and doing any damage to it. That looks good just like that. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this stake was already pretty strong because I didn't dig anything out, I just knocked it right into the ground. Now we're gonna do the same thing on this side with this stake gonna bump this up right here to make sure my length is pretty good there move this one out just a little bit like that then we're gonna do the same thing again keeping it close but not damaging the bed at all there we go that one's all in this one twisted on me just a little bit because I was hitting a root because I'm next to where a tree was a little later I'm going to take this 30 inch piece and attach it to the back as a brace but first I'm gonna work on the top part of the bed. So once I find the length, I'm gonna cut a piece similar to this size and mount it right here on the back. This way, when I build the top part, I have something I can attach the hinge to. So I don't know the exact length of this yet because I have to find the length and the width of the bed of the top part I'm going to build, but this is basically how it's going to look. If you come on this side, you'll just notice that I have to make it so that we don't have any of the light exposing. So as we come around here, we'll see from this angle back here, we don't have any light peeking through underneath the bed. I need to make sure the whole bed is like that. So I'll keep this two by four relatively close to the edge on this side. So I'm just gonna measure the size of this bed and then make sure I get it all good on all the corners so there's not too much air coming through the bottom. After measuring the length, and the width of the bed, I determined that 43 and a quarter inches would be the width and 39 and a half would be the length. And I accounted for, again, the fact that I want this on the inside so that I'm not leaving any peaking uh, air that's coming through because that could really negatively affect our bed if you got a bunch of cold air just coming up through the sides. So let's get those pieces cut and then have that top frame part built. For the top frame, I'm going to need two more two by fours. By the end of it, I'm going to be using four two by fours at eight foot. So we know that we need this one at 43 and a quarter inches. 
So we're going to take this, measure 43 and a quarter, and then mark it. And this one I'm not going to cut freehand because I want these cuts to be perfect. So I'm going to bump up a square to it and then use that to help me cut straight. I got my square all bumped up. This way I can just throw my saw up here and just get a nice clean cut at 43 inches right there. 43 and a quarter actually. Okay, I got that piece cut at 43 and a quarter. Next I'm gonna use the same piece. Just measure 39 and a half inches. And that's what I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna come down to here. I'm gonna mark that and cut it, and then we'll do the same exact thing for the other two by four. That'll give us a perfect square. I have this measured at 39 and a half inches. We're just gonna bump this up, cut it, and do the same thing for the other two by four. I got those four pieces cut. Now, what I'll do is set this up. This is how the frame is gonna be. Essentially just like this. And what I wanna make sure is that this side piece is the one that runs the full length because this is where the hinge is gonna be. So when it lifts up like this, that's how we want it. We don't want it like this because if this hinge is right here, in time, it's just gonna make it all wonky. So we're going to make sure that we go connect this with the length ones running the full, uh, the full length of the whole side. So we're gonna go connect that actually in a raised bed one that I have built already because it's kind of flat. This is gonna to be too hard to attach it right here. Next, I'm just going to take these pieces and I'm gonna put it on this bed like I mentioned because it's gonna help me get these corners lined up nicely. And you could just do this on any flat surface. This is just the flattest, most level surface that I have. So again, our short piece is gonna run the full length. We're gonna be bumping into that one. Now what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself is just clamp it to, the, uh, to this raised bed right here, just like this. Then I'll use my square to make sure I've got a pretty nice right angle in here, but the bed will help me do that. And then I'll just clamp on this side right here. There we go, got that all clamped. You can see it's lined up pretty nicely. Now what I'm going to do is just drill into this side to connect the pieces. And if you want, you could use a little corner clamp, something like this, or something even bigger like this. I just don't think it's completely necessary because this really isn't going to bear much weight at all. So you could add it again, but it's not 100% necessary. What I'm going to do is just drill from this side into this piece right here and then do the same thing on the other side. Then I'm just going to screw it in. I've got a three and a half inch screw, a nice deck screw here so it won't rust. And then clamping that down just made it so I don't have to fight against it too much. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. That gives us that one piece right there. We're going to do the same thing with this other piece. Again, taking the smaller side and then bumping the longer side into it. Clamp it down, do the same thing. After we have this one done, we'll just connect the pieces together. That'll give us our perfect top and we can start building the hoop house right on top of that. I got these corners put together, both of them. And I'm not going to be able to use the raised bed for this next part because the raised bed is too big for, for this. It'll hang off the side. So I'm just gonna do it on this saw horse here. I'm just gonna connect them together. So I'm gonna line them up just like that. Put my clamps on again, and then just screw through the sides. Again, leaving that short length running full ways. Now we're just going to connect the side together just like we did before. And you could use like a pocket hole jig here or something, but I'm trying to do this with as uh, small amount of tools as possible. And again, this isn't gonna be bearing a lot of weight. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go, last screw in. Now let's take this top frame over. Nice and strong. We're gonna lay this on top just like this. Now you can see it's starting to come together a little bit. And now we're gonna attach this back piece. And the reason I waited to attach this back piece is because I want it the same length as the whole entire bed. So now that we know it's gonna be 50 and a quarter inches, I'm going to cut another two by four on this back part, 50 and a quarter inches, attach it to this brace in the back. I got this piece cut at the same length as the whole bed about 50 and a quarter inches. Now what I'm going to do is just line it up with where my stakes are. I'm just going to pre-drill a hole. I'm gonna put 
two in each spot in the end of it. But I'm just gonna start just so I know where it's at. Now going all the way through. pre drill one here. Next, I'm going to take this, and this is what's gonna be the back side. And the frame is just gonna attach to this. So we're gonna go up to the same height as it. And the reason I waited to make this back piece because I wanted to know the full length. I'm gonna move this back just so I know the height. I want it resting right at the base of it. It looks like I pre-drilled my hole just a little high, but that's okay. Pre-drill another one lower. And I want it just at the bottom of this, but not pushing up against it. Take some two and a half inch screws. Screw this side in. Do the same thing on this side, where it's just bumping up against the top. There we go. Then what I can do is take my hinges and attach it right here, and then we'll just be able to lift that bed up. So, the reason I put this in the back was so I didn't have to attach anything to the bed, but it also makes the whole thing a lot stronger. Now I can take this 30 inch piece that I had and put this at the bottom too, to strengthen up this whole brace in the back. This isn't gonna bear a lot of weight because since I made it all the same height, the weight's gonna be evenly distributed throughout the whole entire bed on the top of it. So let's just get this 30 inch piece down at the bottom. I'll just put a level up here to make sure it's level. Not that it has to be, but just so it looks nicer. Looks good there. I'm just using a regular drill bit for this. I'm not using a countersink bit because uh, it doesn't really matter in this situation. And I'll put two screws in each, staggered. For the top race, I'll do the same thing, two screws. I just need to make sure that I hit the wood because it's a little lower on this backside. May have to go through this knot here. Now, we've got this back brace built where we're going to be attaching this to, just like this. Looks really good so far. Now I'm just gonna start building this hoop structure on the top. So uh, in order to build this, I'm gonna take it off first because I'm, I want to stand on top of it as I'm putting the hoops in because you need a little leverage sometimes. So I'm gonna take this, put it onto the ground and then build the hoop system right on the ground. Next, we're gonna start building the hoop house for the top and then attach it to this frame. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to be using half inch schedule 40 PVC and to attach it to the frame, we're going to be using these end caps, half inch end caps, non-threaded. So we wanna make sure that we're attaching them to the inside corner of the frame right here. This way, when we add a second layer for a double layered hoop house, we're gonna attach it on the back here. So we have the gap between. So I'm just going to pre-drill these a hole in, them, in between them and then screw them on to the, to the four corners. So we'll just take this bit and just drill right in the center. And I already did the other three. Then we're just gonna take these inch and five eight screws, these decking screws, and then just start it in here. And then just attach it to these inside corners. So I'm going to do that on all four corners. Then I'll measure it and then get the length of my hoop and then attach it on. There we go, that last cap's in. Next, I'm going to find out the length of my hoop so what I'm going to do is just measure from inside to inside. It's about 34 inches. That's the diameter. What I need is the radius. So to get the radius, I'm just gonna divide that 34 divided by two, that's gonna be 17. Then I'm going to take that 17 and multiply it times 3.14 or pi, and that'll give me the exact size of the hoop. That's gonna be 47 inches. But I'm gonna add an additional four inches or so. Because this bed is so short, it's gonna make it hard for me to bend that. Uh, that PVC. So we're gonna end up with about 51 inches. So let's go over here. I got this PVC just laid on the back. Then we're gonna measure 51 inches. And this is just some PVC I had left over from the other build. And I got my marker here. So 51 inches, I'm gonna mark that right there. Then we're just gonna use this, use this brace kind of like to help hold it in. Clamp it pretty tight. And then we're just gonna use a simple hacksaw. 
And again, this is half inch schedule 40 PVC. It's schedule 40 because it's thicker there on the inside. So we want that. So it's a little stronger. I got this 51 inch piece. We're just gonna attach it now. First, I'm gonna push this side in. And then I, I need to make sure that I'm putting this T on. So this T is three quarter inch by three quarter inch by half inch. And we need to put it on before we attach the other side. And you'll see why, because that's gonna be the top purlin, the top support beam. So slide that on. Now we're gonna bend this. And just, you can see why I did it on the ground now. Push it into here. Gonna take a little bit of force. There we go. So you could angle these towards the inside a little more. It might be a better idea. But you can see why I added that additional four inches. This way it made it a little easier. It made the hoop a little higher. So we've got a higher growing structure. We'll bend it just like that a little bit. Now I'm gonna attach the other side with the T so we can have a nice top support beam. Now let's get this other one on. Make sure we put the T on. And then just attach this. There we go. Now we're going to take this top piece here attach it on the inside push it as far as we can then I'm going to take this have it about as centered as I can and just mark it for length and I want it going in so I'm gonna mark it just a little bit past right there looks good then we're just gonna cut that and attach it there we go got this top part cut now we'll just attach it in here and here, pretty good. Looks really nice. Next, what I'm going to do is just pre-drill a hole in this side, right here as center as I can do it. And then I'm gonna pre-drill a hole on the other side and put a screw in just so it holds it in place at the top. Looks like Tuck's uh, digging his little holes, getting the bed just a little dirty for us. This guy's always out here, always part of the channel. So hit the like button if you love seeing Tuck in the videos. He's just been chilling, relaxing for this video. And he loves all the support and kind words you guys share with him. So let's get this top part attached. So we'll just drill right in the center. This is gonna help hold it into place. And I'm going to just use these stainless steel, these metal screws here, rounded head. So when I put the plastic over it, it's not gonna affect the plastic. It's not gonna tear into it. It'll hold that in place and we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Again, this is just really to hold it in place. Now, what we can do is start getting our plastic over the top and it's looking really nice so far. I'm happy with the way it's coming out. But to put the plastic on, I'm just gonna set it up on here first. It's gonna be make, make it a little easier, I think. Let's get this on top of the bed now, now that it's basically all built. So that's how it's gonna rest, just like that. We've got to attach the plastic and attach the uh, hinges. And the cool thing about this is it doesn't just have to be for plastic. So if you're in an area that doesn't get a freeze, that's okay because this will work, work perfect for if you want to put an insect netting over the top in the early spring, or even late in the summer, if you want to put a shade cloth over top. So it's so multifunctional. It's one of the things that just, it reminds me of permaculture because there's so many uses for it. And I just love the way it is. Also, if you wanna just take the whole thing apart and detach it, all you're gonna to have to do is just take this top right back off. You can leave the frame in the back or you can remove the whole frame because again, we're not damaging this actual raised bed at all. Now, we're going to get this greenhouse plastic out and attach it. This is six mil greenhouse plastic and everything that I'm basically using in this video, I'm gonna have a link down in the description. So if you wanna use the same stuff I did then, and you can just follow the links. Cut the top off, slide it out. This is probably bigger size plastic than I need, but they allow you to get all different sizes. I'm going to be using this for my other raised beds and stuff too, in case I need to replace any layers. So I'm just gonna drape this over the top because it's gonna unfold so many times. So we wanna do a little extra with the length because uh, we're gonna wanna pull it down. And I'll show you how I'm attaching it. I'm just gonna cut it like this and cut it before I unfold it so it makes it a lot easier on me. I'm sure I'm gonna have some extra, but that's okay. Now 
Now that I have the plastic on, I'm gonna take this furring strip right here. I'm just gonna cut it to length. It's gonna go about halfway. Push it up against the side. Just mark it here. That's where I'm gonna cut it. Then I'll pull the plastic tight on this side and then screw it down. And then after I do the both sides, I'll pull the plastic tight on this side. So for this greenhouse build, I only went with one top piece while the other ones I went with three. I think I'm go going to be okay with just the one top piece because it's a much smaller bed. I got this spurring strip all cut. Now I'm just gonna line it up. I pre-drilled holes and I'm just going to be screwing it in. After I attach this side, I'm going to uh, pull it really tight on the other side. I just wanna make sure that I'm up against this piece as far as I can. So when I wanna put another um, cap in the corner to make a second layer, I've got the space. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just pull it as tight as I can. I'll use my leg as some leverage. And I'll work my way down. And then when I'm pulling from the ends is when it's gonna give me that good hoop shape. So this is just matters that I tight on this side. There we go, that's all in. Next, I'm going to use these greenhouse clips right here, half inch greenhouse clips, to help pull this tight before I attach the furring strip at the bottom. So we'll just open this up. So what I'm gonna do is just pull tight on this side, help get me that good shape, and then just snap this in. These are kind of hard to attach, so. There we go. I'm gonna work my way down, just a little bit down here, and do the same thing. There we go. Now I'm gonna move down to this side over here. And I'm gonna come up over here, get some leverage. Pull this tight. Pop that clamp on like that. And then down here. Just like that. And as you can see, it gives you that a lot stronger strength. Then all I have to do is really pull this in and attach it. So I don't have to pull all the way down while I'm putting the furring strip on. I'm gonna do the same thing with the clips on this other side, two clips on each side. There we go, we got all the clips on, made it much stronger. Now we're just gonna take this furring strip, I'm gonna bump it up to this side and this side and just measure it, or mark it, and then we're gonna cut the piece, same thing on the other side. So, so that we can attach this plastic down. Now we're going to take this plastic and just pull it towards the center. Take my strip that I cut, bump it on the inside like that, make it relatively tight, and then just screw it down with the inch and 5 8 screws I'm using. There we go, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Then we can just cut this plastic off. We got that other fairing strip attached, so all the plastic is attached. Now I'm just gonna go around and cut the excess plastic off. Now, the hinge hoop house is really taking shape. All I really need to do now, one of the main things is just attach the hinges in the back, so let's do that. Let's get these hinges attached, and you can see where the bracing is coming to effect now. This is what's gonna hold the whole thing together. So. For these hinges, I've got three inch hinges. We don't want them bigger than three and a half inches because like I mentioned earlier, we want it to be on this piece that's running the whole length. I'll finish putting these screws in and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. There we go, last screw in on that hinge. Now let's move around to the front and see how it looks. So, if we open it up, works beautifully with the hinges. I love that no part of this whole entire build is attached to the bed. It's all its own separate unit. And that's how it's gonna work out perfectly. So one thing I was worried about was that this bed wasn't gonna be completely uh, you know, perfect and we weren't gonna get a great seal at the bottom. So if you look underneath here, you can see a gap of airspace there. So to compensate for that, I picked up some of this rubber foam. So what I'm going to do is just go around the outside of the edge with uh, this marker and just mark exactly where the outside of the bed is like this. And then I'll put the foam there 
And the reason I waited to put the foam on until after I put the hinges because I wanted to know exactly where this was going to line up. So I'm going to mark the whole outside edge, attach the foam to the bottom and see if that fills some of the gaps. There we go. Got it all marked. Now, I'm just going to put this in temporarily to hold it up. You can see where I marked all along the edge there. It's basically just the outline of the bed. I'm going to take this foam. It should have one sticky side like it does here. Then I'm just gonna start, this is only 10 feet and the whole uh, circumference of this whole thing is gonna be about 13 feet. So I know I'm gonna be just a little bit short. So I do have two pieces of foam. So I'm just going to start it about in the middle here and just center it on my, on my mark. And then I'm gonna move around the whole bed just attaching it like this. So I'm on my second roll. I almost got most of it done. And I've never tried this before, but I think it will work. It's a weather seal. It should definitely help fill the gaps in though. So I'm at the end there. I'm just gonna cut it to length. Just like that. And then I could just peel back this. And I think it's gonna help that this constantly, the weight of the two of them being pushed together. So it's gonna help hold them into place. And again, this is a weather seal, so I think it should do okay with a high level, level of humidity in this bed. So we'll drop this down and see if it helped fill that gap at all. So let's just see how that seal looks now. Oh wow, it looks a lot better. I think the weather seal will help a lot from that cold creeping in. And I'm real happy with the way it came out. I think that added pressure is just gonna keep that weather seal strong and on there. One thing I wanted to mention if, is if you have a much bigger bed, you may need to add a few more supports in the center here and some extra supports at the top, like three, like I did for my other hinged hoop house bed. And if you live in an area that's super, super windy, this may not even work for you because uh, when you're keeping it up like this, when it's kind of warm outside, it may just get taken in the wind. But what you could do is just add some eye hooks on the side and then put a string down just to hold it into place so it can't fly back too far. To do that, I would just knock some stakes in, put an eye hook and some string, just connect it like that. So overall, I'm real happy with the way it came out. I'm going to be growing a lot of food in here. Another thing to mention too is you don't want to put these hinged hoop houses on too early. You want to kind of wait for it to start getting cold out and the frost to start to come or else you're going to have to be out here all day just opening it and closing it because you don't want it staying closed when it's warm out or if you have some things planted like lettuces, those will bolt a lot earlier than they would have just because you're kind of creating that greenhouse effect. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope I encourage you to get out there and build one of these beds yourself. It's not really that hard. It's so fun to do. And as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm obsessed with growing food as long as I possibly can through the season. I just love doing it. This will not only allow you to grow later into the fall and for me, even through the winter with the second hoop I'm gonna put on, but it allows you to start earlier in the spring too. Plus I get some great utilization out of this birdies raised bed, which I love so much and I'm not damaging it at all. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything. Tuck and James will be back at you again real soon. We 